Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Xin Yimou, a PhD student from U Fudan University. And I'm honored to introduce our work titled Unifying Local and Global Knowledge, Empowering Large Language, Large Language Models as Political Experts with Knowledge Graphs. It's a joint work with the University of Rochester. Uh, today we have several parts to go and I will start from the introduction part. As we all know, the large language models have revolutioned many fields and uh, have exhibited an impressive ability to tackle a wide range of tasks. However, they still encounter challenges such as hallucination when deployed in specific domains, such as the political domain. In political domain, we mainly focus on political actor modeling, where we want to understand and predict the attitudes and behaviors of politicians. For example, if you ask ChatGPT what will a po US politician, Andrew Carson, vote on a future bill, it will refuse to answer you since it lacks relevant knowledge or its knowledge is outdated. So the most direct way is to use some knowledge-based methods to solve the hallucination problem, and the among which the cage-based solutions have many advantages shown below. Thus, we focus on this kind of knowledge source in this, in this paper. However, the general method for KG augmented large language models still fall short in the political domain, mainly because of three key factors. The first one is knowledge task mismatch. If you directly use the existing knowledge graphs such as Wikidata or Freebase, you may find that there are many generic knowledge such as uh, nationality, the birthplace of the poor politicians, which can be inadequate for us to modeling their ideology or attitudes or something like that. So uh, the, the knowledge is not, uh, not sufficient. And the second factor is in, in, ineffective direct match. Many current works just uh, uh, target on the tasks of KGQA, where they have a very strong assumption that their unseen entity can always be found in the knowledge graphs. However, in the, KG, uh, in the political domain, many uh, tasks are related to the future facts, so these facts can never be found in the knowledge graphs. So this kind of method may also meet some challenges. And the third part is lack of semantic understanding, as many current approaches just to retrieve the evidence and prompt them to the large language models directly, but ignore their semantic relationship and fail to find some high level clues that might be very useful for answering the questions. In light of these challenges, we now propose our methodology. Uh, to solve the first challenges, we propose to construct a multi-view political knowledge graph consisting of both conceptual knowledge and factual knowledge. The conceptual knowledge is from Wikidata, where we select the US politicians as the seed entities and retrieve the relevant fact triples from Wikidata. And then we crawl this structural information or some semi-structural information from websites covering different aspects of uh, politics, like legislation, elections, and diplomatic events. And then, uh, then we align the two subgraphs to form the multi-view political graphs. And based on this knowledge graph, we aim to augment the uh, large language models during their inference. So it's notable that we do not train the large language models. The first step is knowledge acquisition, where we aim to select the relevant knowledge uh, to the given query. So firstly, we extract uh, the key entities in the given question, and then we retrieve the neighbor fact triples in the knowledge graphs and get the candidate fact triples. To further filter out the noise, we get a dense retriever to encode both the query and the fact triples, and uh, further select those more relevant to the query based on their sem uh, semantic similarities. Uh, and it's, uh, uh, it's not that we call the retrieved result local evidence here, and many current approaches just end here by prompting the large language models with the local evidence. Uh, however, we believe that it's not sufficient, as we mentioned the, before, we need to get more high-level information. Thus, in step, in step two, we propose to aggregate that knowledge um, to get uh, some high-level insights. And the most intuitive way is to do this operation in the embedding space, where we can apply another uh, encoder to encode the uh, factory triples uh, got in last step and we can further average the information to get a global vector. It's just like a topic vector. And then this top topic vector can be served as a soft prompt to large language models later. 
Uh, to further optimize the, these components, we propose a pre-training task named the factor reconstruction of KG triples to align the semantic space of the encoder and the large language models. Although the implicit way is very, it's very directive, ho however, it's very difficult to explain what the vector is. So we further apply an explicit manner. The most direct way is to prompt the large, langu large language models themselves to reason and summarize from the local evidence. Uh, it's just similar to what had been done in the chain of thought paper. Uh, although it's very intuitive, sometimes this kind of method can get very ambiguous summaries since the retrieved evidence can be very dispersed. Thus, we further apply a group then reason strategy where we prompt large language models to divide the evidence into semantic groups first, and we do the summarization and the reasoning result uh, inside each group. Here you can see the picture provides an uh, example. Uh, when we retrieve some basic evidence like the voting records of a politician in different topics like abortion rights and LGBT rights. And in this way, we can get some high level insights like Andrew Carson is liberal on abortion rights, which can be more direct than the, his uh, voting records. And uh, after we got the local and global knowledge, we now can provide this knowledge to large language models by prompting. Here we apply a predefined instruction template by concatenating the two kinds of knowledge and the given question, and then we can observe the conditional generation result of the models. And that's all about our method, and here comes the experiment. Um, actually, we have done many experiments on different tasks and data sets, including the roll call vote prediction, where we aim to predict uh, what a US legislator will vote on a future bill, yes or nay. And the uh, event prediction aims to predict either the subjective or objective of a future event. And statement identification is to identify whether a given statement uh, is uh, provided by a given person. And all these tasks can be reformulated uh, into a multiple choice question for a quantitative measurement. Uh, in terms of baselines, we firstly include those without knowledge, external knowledge, like the vanilla large language models and those based on generated knowledge, like GKP and Recite. We also include those with local evidence only, uh, like capping, mind mind map, and its variants. And for our method, we provide these three variants, and uh, we apply capping as the arrangement method for our local evidence. Here is the main result of the experiment, and uh, table two shows the result on some open source large language models like LAMA2 and Vicuna. Here, uh, the result shows that our methods show uh, distinctive advantages across different tasks, uh, highlighting the effectiveness of the global knowledge. Uh, however, you can find that this, the advantage is not as stable across different tasks. That might be the result of the characteristics of different uh, tasks. For example, for the Rokovo prediction RCVP task, the retrieved uh, evidence can be more concentrated on the voting records. So that's why the implicit way can get more reasonable vector. And here, the table three shows the result on the closed source the ChatGPT. And uh, in this way, our GTR strategy show more pronounced advantages, and many benefiting from the strong ability of large, lang large language models uh, grouping and uh, reasoning ability. To further validate the effectiveness of our MVPKG, we also compare with other knowledge graphs such as the generic wiki data, Yago, and as well as the political domain knowledge graph, KGAP. And the results across different tasks and methods show that uh, our MVP KG is more e effective. Uh, again, strength that the factual records can be more useful uh, uh, in addition to the generic knowledge in existing knowledge graphs. To further uh, understand the this framework and the global knowledge, we have done some in-depth analysis, uh, such as the explanation of the global vector. Here we show the PCA results uh, of the global vector 
got in the implicit method in RCVP dataset. Here, each point just represents a transformed vector of a question asking the same bill but for different persons. So the, ve the vector can represent some information about this person. And we got the labels from the third party websites, and you can see that the global vector aggregated by the knowledge encoder can partly ref reflect the attitude by the key individuals. So that helps us understand why this kind of vector is uh, effective for the large language models. Also, we provide a case study to uh, uh, further facilitate understanding. Here is a question about what will J Jason Smith vote on a bill regarding to the COVID-19 vaccination for foreign travelers. And the ground truth answer is yeah. And you can see that although the system have retrieved the relevant local evidence, like his historical voting records, the capping baseline still uh, answer wrongly, since it uh, misunderstood the relationship between the question and the retrieved evidence. And in comparison, our model gets some more direct information, like this person's in, uh, preference, preference on the policy or his overall attitude like a conservative on this topic and got the right answer. So we can see that the global facts provide more direct information. In summary, in this paper, we introduce a PEG framework uh, where we firstly construct a MVP KG first and then we pro propose to unify the local and the global knowledge to further help the large language models uh, solve this kind of questions. And their experiments are also demonstrated the effectiveness of our method. So that's all about this paper. Thank you for listening. I'm glad to answer your questions.